So if you've tried the basic view follow options in GameMaker and find them a bit ugly and just want a nice smooth simple camera, I'm going to show you how to do that really quickly with a method I use almost always at least as a starting point and sometimes rely on entirely for things like game jams. First of all in your room make sure you've enabled viewports and enabled viewport 0 and these are the correct size for whatever camera you want. With nothing else modifying it your first room's viewport settings and sizes will affect your window size too so keep that in mind. We're going to make an object called O camera and the idea is that we'll have one instance of this object that our camera locks onto and we just give it targets to smoothly move towards over time or just snap it to a position if we want it to be an instant cut or whatever else. In the create event we want to establish the width and height of the camera, you might derive these by a bunch of different means but often this will just be your game's resolution so I just sort of hard coded 640 by 360 here, do whatever works for you. Then an initial follow target, in my case I wanted to start off following the player, you can also put the keyword no one here and write controls in the step event to move the camera manually like in an RTS or something but still have the option to follow a target later. You might want to set X and Y to something initially or just do that when you position it in your room or when you create it dynamically or whatever else but if you get that initial burst of movement as the camera zooms towards your player for example it just means you want to control where the camera initially spawns presumably right on top of its initial target but it's up to you. We need an X2 and a Y2 and these should probably be set to your camera's current X, Y initially. They'll be overwritten every frame by the position of whatever it is we're trying to follow. Add the step event. First we're going to check if we need to update x2 and y2. If follow is not set to no one, x2 equals our follow instance's x coordinate and the same for y. Then we're going to add the two lines that do most of the work here which is x plus equals x2 minus x divided by 25. Then the same with y and y2. You can also use the lerp function if you're familiar with that but the idea is we move our x and y towards our x2 and y2 by 1 25th of the difference between the two positions. This value gets smaller and smaller as we get closer which means the camera moves fastest when it is far away from the target and slowest when it has almost arrived. That gives it that eased effect where it slowly comes to a stop as it reaches the target. 25 is an arbitrary value but the higher a number you use the slower the camera will follow and vice versa. I find 25 just looks nice quite a lot of the time but it's a little on the slower side. Sometimes I'll use 15 or even lower. Then all we need to do is have the game camera move to point directly at our camera object. We do this with one simple function using camera set view pause setting view camera 0 which is our current active camera to our x minus half of our camera width and y minus half of our camera height. This will leave us with our camera object right in the middle of our view. You can give the camera object a sprite if you want. To test this you should see it's exactly in the middle of the screen. But that's it. As you can see it follows my player around perfectly and smoothly. I also put in a little focus swap in the key press enter event so if I press enter I can swap the camera to this little NPC and back again. Just to show how easy it is to move the camera between targets. Now this is just a foundation. You can go a million different directions with this and a ton can go into your camera design. It's one of the key pillars you want to get right in your game design as early as possible so it's worth thinking a lot about. You might not want to always focus directly on the player but maybe a little bit ahead of them. You might want to not move it too vertically until you're touching the ground in a platformer. You can go all the way but I find this simple setup is usually a good starting point for you to build your game's camera rules around and into. I use this foundation for Pokepoke which has a whole camera trigger zone system built on top that lets special trigger zones change my camera rules on the fly. Check out some of my videos on Pokepoke if that sounds at all interesting interesting to you. If you find these videos helpful and want me to make more of them I could really use the help of an editor to reduce the length of time it takes me to make them or at least allow me to make more of them at a time but for that I need to pay an editor. You can help me do that by working towards my goals at patreon.com forward slash seanjs. You get access to these videos earlier than everyone else, you get your name in the credits, you can one to one DM me on discord about your issues, you can get priority for GM surgery, source code access, all that good stuff so check it out. Cheers for watching to the end and I'll catch you all next time.